we've heard an example of uh, retaining the form of sound words tonight. <clears throat> I'm grateful for uh, Brother Mike and his uh, ministry among us. Every, every member of the body brings uh, something that is needed, something that is uh, beneficial, and also something that in some way no one else can, can minister. Um, the, the gospel, you see so much. I know that Brother Mike could have said a lot more about his experiences with regard, in regards to these things, but I know him well enough that I could insert a lot of those things you know, in, my, in my own mind as he ministered to us. Uh, so I'm grateful for how the Lord tempers the body together. And bro Brother Mike brings bring something to us that is, is unique in that way, and I'm very thankful for that. There has been at least three that I could think of as I was jotting notes and trying to put these things together in my mind through this message. At least three areas that God has declared, he's revealed, that he's abandoned and that he's not going to repair or remedy. One of them is this world, it's reserved unto fire. The next one is the nature of Adam, you must be born again. And the third is Babylon. Those three things, he's, he's consigned them to be destroyed. There's, there's no labor or no investment that is going to avert the destruction of this world. There's no um, ministry or tactic or however you want to look at it then can, that can be given to the nature of the flesh and restore Adam's nature. It, it, won't, it won't be changed. And the, those things we've, we've talked about a lot in our midst. And that's, you know, everybody generally has a pretty good, pretty good grasp of that. That's why you have to be delivered from the world. That's why you have to be born again. You've got to have a new nature. And now, see, this, we're adding now this understanding of Babylon. That's right. That's right. That it, it won't be changed. Yeah. I, I remember a time in my understanding in the past when I... I I, I, I kind of knew this, but couldn't really say it. I, I knew when I, I saw my father leave Babylon. He, he, he just came, came to this point where it, they don't want what the Lord's given me, so I'm, I'm just going to leave. Mm -hmm. And we've seen others. Brother Ricky has done it. Brother Michael's done it. Brother Given had done it years ago, mm -hmm. had come to this reality, and what a, what a deliverance yes, amen. To, to know to see, to be able to identify where God isn't so that you're not there. Amen. Noah's generation was another example of this. The Lord didn't give Noah a gospel. He gave Noah a commission to build because the, he said, the end of all flesh has come before me, 120 years. That's it. It was a declaration. And that's what he's done with Babylon. That's what he did, did with, with the flesh. Just like Noah. So the Lord, it's like Noah was a hint of this is the way the Lord works. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. There, there comes a time with, with the Lord that it's sealed. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, ju it's just done. The Lord, the Lord was done with that generation, with it, actually with the earth at that point. It came, there was a, um, the Lord declared he was done with the, with the nature of Adam. Mm -hmm. He wasn't going to restore it. That's what uh, the parable, it was, I, I believe it's a parable in the, the uh, prophecy of Isaiah about the vineyard. He gathered out the stones thereof and built a fence and, and planted a vine and dug a well and built a tower. And what did it produce? He, he desolated it. Yeah. That's parable of the flesh, yeah. the, nature of, the nature of Adam. There's time in the book of... Uh, Book of Jeremiah, the Lord said, don't pray for this people. There, there's a lot of religious people that don't know God's like this. You ever, you've heard songs sung, and you've heard messages preached, and you've heard books, you've read books uh, written about the point of, there is no point of no return. That's pretty common. 
It's a pretty common assumption that it, no matter how far you've gone, no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter where you've been, there's only one step back to God. People take it that far. And when God has put it, he has put it, made record, he's written it, don't pray for this people because my face cannot be towards them. And he then remember he made that analogy about uh, Sam was it Samuel praying for them and Daniel and it says you have um, another example of, is Paul saying you've judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Paul knew when to when to just turn away. He just pulled up stakes. You've judged yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Paul was close enough to the Lord that he he could tell he knew when it was time to pull up stakes and just. The, he had precedent for this because this is how the Lord worked. And Paul, I don't presume that there is some simple equation to figure this out. And I know the things, I know Brother Mike well enough that the things that he has said, he doesn't say lightly about leaving somewhere. <clears throat> of the same people that the Lord said in Jeremiah, don't pray for this people, those are the same people that he said, neither could they blush. That's right. So these people, they were, they were beyond shame. They couldn't be ashamed of what was shameful. They were, pat, they were so hard. That's, the, that's like the old covenant version of Paul saying that their, their conscience was seared with a hot iron. They couldn't blush. That's saying the same thing. They, sh they should have been ashamed, and they couldn't be. They were, uh, another phrase that Paul used was past feeling. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole, just imagine what it would be like to live on in your body with no nervous system. Have no feeling of pain at all. There, there are people, actually, there are diseases. I don't, I'm not familiar with the names or anything, but they're, it's very dangerous. Because somebody can, they can be destroyed and not know, mm -hmm. not sense the danger. And there's a spiritual condition like that, a past feeling. Right. This, is, this calls for sobriety. Amen. The book of Hebrews talks about it, uh, a condition where it is impossible to renew them again to repentance. It, it behooves us to know that, that these, uh, these conditions exist. Mm -hmm. That God is pulled out of Babylon. And he's offered it no, no hope. Uh, so Paul, Paul expressed that he feared labor in vain. And this is where the exhortation comes in. And I know that this was part of uh, what Brother Mike expressed is some, some regret of laboring as long as he did with no fruit. And Paul uh, feared, he expressed to the churches, uh, I, I fear that I have bestowed on you labor in vain. And I thought about this, and I, I don't have a whole lot to say about this, but I wanted to, to uh, connect these things together. Paul also said, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. But then he, all, then he said here that I fear lest I have labored in vain. So you got it. These things have to reconcile. Paul wasn't, this is not like, schizophrenia that on one hand he said oh it's impossible or he wasn't Paul wasn't confused over this matter right. I think and I think the caveat here is that laboring in Babylon out of good out of conscience towards the Lord is vain because it's in Babylon yeah. Yeah. your labor in the Lord is not in vain he didn't say your labor will never be in vain That's right. your labor in the Lord is not in vain right. Amen. I know that there's there's more to know more to see than what I've seen in, the, in that comparison, but I think it's, it's worthy of further consideration. Jesus did leave Jerusalem, mm -hmm. yeah. left it forsaken. Mm -hmm. And if there, was, if there was anybody that could do anything, it, it obviously would have been him. And so, uh, and I already mentioned that the Lord forsook that, uh, that vineyard in, in the book of Isaiah. So the, the exhortation is, uh, to seek the Lord for uh, sensitivity and discernment in these things because there, there, is, there is no way to uh, just, just itemize a, a checklist and, and just write, write things off systematically uh, because every, every one of us have, have been plucked out 
of Babylon mm -hmm. some point along the line. And so the, the, uh, the, the exhortation is to know, uh, to have the discernment to throw your labors where mm -hmm. someone can come out. Not, not labor in the system, but labor where someone, ha where someone can come out of it. I know there's a better way of saying that, but I, I think you, you, you know what I mean. Not laboring, not endeavoring to convert the system or the institution, but sowing like that, uh, the parable that Jesus told that he sowed virtually without discrimination. He sowed, it, the seed fell, fell everywhere. And, and that, that type of sowing then will reveal who, who is who. And so there's... Um, such a great need for sensitivity and and tenderness towards the Lord in these things. So, uh, thank you, Brother Mike. Very, very profitable message. So, open up to.